Now that the M2 MacBook Pro has been released and tested, many people are saying, you know what? I might just buy an M1 MacBook Air for a lot less money. For example, we've seen them new as low as 850 bucks and refurbished for 796 compared to 1300. So how big is the difference really with real world use? Well, today that's exactly what we're gonna look at. We're not gonna run any synthetic benchmarks only real world use, the type of things that people that are buying these machines will be doing. So let's go ahead and jump in. So both of these are the base models, the ones that you can get discounted and the ones that Apple is keeping in stock in all their stores and Best Buy, Costco, places like that. Now, as far as the design, I mean, these designs have been around for many years. I have to say, I do prefer the MacBook Air's wedge shape. It's a little bit more comfortable in the hand. And then if you are typing, it digs less into your palm compared to the slate shape of the M1 MacBook Pro. Now, as far as weight, it's not that different, so I don't think it's a deal breaker. As far as the keyboards, they are identical. They both feel great, and the trackpad is slightly larger on the MacBook Pro, but I've never noticed a difference in real-world use. Of course, we do have the touch bar on the MacBook Pro. Some people do enjoy it. Most people prefer having the physical function keys on the MacBook Air. As far as the displays, they are practically identical, both color accurate. The only difference is that the Pro can get brighter at 500 nits compared to 400. Now, once again, in real world use, it is a very small difference and it should not be a deal breaker. Both of these MacBooks have 720p webcams that are quite old. This one right here is the M1 MacBook Air. And this is the M2 MacBook Pro, which just have updated processing, so it should look a bit better. But you guys let me know what you think down below and also what differences you heard in microphones. Along with that, both of these have stereo speakers, but we have noticed that the M2 MacBook Pro actually got slightly quieter than the previous M1 version. So let's go ahead and compare the speakers. Now, realistically, you'll be happy with either laptop, but in my opinion, the M1 MacBook Air does sound a little bit better. You guys let me know what you think. Getting into everyday real world performance, I have five web browsing tabs opened up right here. Most people use these systems for using Google Drive, email, um, some YouTube listening music, going to various articles, things like that. So this is a very basic setup and both of these systems are extremely snappy for this kind of stuff. And to be honest, even though the M2 chip is snappier, you can't really tell a difference day to day with these kind of tasks. Now, one thing we hear a lot of people using these kind of machines for is Xcode, especially people that are getting into coding, and there's a lot of them. So how big of a performance difference is there really? In our standard compiling test, the M2 took two minutes and 14 seconds compared to two minutes and seven seconds for the M1 MacBook Air. Now, that seems extremely odd. Why would it be slower? Uh, well, we did run this before, and the M2 was faster, but that was with only Xcode open, nothing else. And of course, this time around, we do have five web browsing tabs open, which is very real world. We have that open on both systems. And a lot of our commenters said, even 10 tabs is too low. When they're compiling, they have 20, 30 tabs open. Now that is because with the base model of the M2 MacBook Pro, we only have one NAND chip for the SSD, which results in slower SSD speeds. And with these eight gig models, Mac OS does have to use the SSDs as RAM. Now I wanna show you guys that the MacBook Air actually has more storage filled up than the MacBook Pro has. We have 91 gigs compared to 135 available. And with these SSDs, if they're really full, they can slow down a bit. So the advantage is with the M2 MacBook Pro. Now, before we run our other real world tests, we're gonna have to transfer our 
test folder to the systems. I'm gonna have to delete Xcode just so we can fit this folder on here. And that's honestly one of the struggles that you get with only having 256 gigs of space. So now let's go ahead and transfer our PC test folder and we'll see how long it takes. It's been three minutes so far and the M2 is starting to slow down. Now it was in the lead and started the transfer quicker, but because of that NAND setup, it does slow down faster. Whereas this one is leading by quite a bit now, even though I noticed that the folder is actually slightly larger, about three gigs larger overall. I don't know what else was added to that one. The M2 took five minutes and 37.89, pretty much five minutes and 38 seconds to do this transfer compared to three minutes and 41 for our MacBook Air, which had a slightly larger file. Now the SSDs are different, but the read speeds are quite similar. They're both Thunderbolt 3 external SSDs. But of course, if you upgrade the M2 MacBook Pro to 512 gigabytes, then it won't have that slowdown. Now, another thing that a lot of people do with their MacBooks is edit photos. So I have Lightroom opened up right here, and let's test out the responsiveness of both of these systems. So as you guys could see, the M2 is loading up these 42 megapixel images quicker and doing the effects. Well, that last one right there was actually faster on the M1. So maybe I spoke too soon. Let's go through a few more of them. Um, now, some people have said, well, 50 pictures, that's too much. And to be honest, I have, I don't think ever went out and done a photo shoot and loaded 50 pictures in. It's always 150, 200, or from weddings, of course, then you're in the thousands. Uh, so 50 is very, very reasonable and probably too little. Now, as far as doing this kind of stuff and going in and zooming in and using brushes, things like that, you are not gonna notice very many differences between these systems. Lightroom does use graphics performance and the M2 does have better graphics, but it doesn't need all of that performance. Now, where we could see a bigger difference is when we go ahead and export, and then we're gonna be maxing out the CPU and using the better graphics. So let's go ahead and hit export and time it. Let's take a look at the activity monitor and our M2 is using 5.6 gigabytes of swap, whereas the M1 is using just over five, meaning we're definitely using the SSD as RAM, and that makes sense with these eight gig models, totally normal, because just the Mac OS operating system by itself can use four to five gigabytes. Now our M2 is quite a bit behind, which I wasn't expecting it to be this slow. And of course, if we take a look at our SSD, we have 43 gigabytes about left on the M1, and we have 41 remaining on the M2. Very similar as far as the storage. So the only difference is that the SSD on the M1 MacBook Air is faster with those two NAND chips. And of course we do have five Chrome tabs in the background on both systems set up exactly the same. So we have a video playing, we have um, this IGN Chrome tab, we have some Apple stock, we have our Google Drive, and as you guys can see, our M1 MacBook Air is being a bit more responsive as well. All right, the M1 MacBook Air is finished. It took three minutes and 31 seconds, which is definitely slower than if it was just running by itself. And our M2 took six minutes and 46 seconds. So it's not twice as slow, but it's getting close to that. And you guys saw it. everything on these systems is set up the same, except for this MacBook is a lot less expensive. So how could you make the M2 MacBook Pro faster? Well, first off, you could keep almost nothing on your SSD. These have 245 gigs once they're formatted. We're using about 200 gigs, about 120, 125 is our files. And then of course you have the Mac OS, you have the system data. So it's not like we overloaded these, but if you're buying a base model, you're gonna have your files and programs on there. Or the other option is to not have anything else open. So right now we have these web browsing tabs. We have that song opened up right here, the music in the background, Google Drive, all that kind of stuff. So responsiveness now that we're not exporting, it's back to normal, both are nice and quick. But we're just gonna go ahead and close it, which I never run this way. Everybody's multitasking. A lot of people keep multiple applications open. Now they're using your iPhone and having apps work that way on there. So let's run this test again. All right, our M2 is done. That was actually the fastest time we've ever gotten with it. The Owen MacBook Air is finishing up, and it took two minutes and 21 seconds 
compared to one minute and 53 seconds for the base M2. So with the best case scenario, the M2 is 14% faster than the M1. And that was, you know, by, like I said, the fastest time we ever got, usually it's two minutes. But when we have five Chrome tabs open, we have stuff in the background, you're multitasking. Well, you guys saw the difference. The M1 Air did slow down, but it took about a minute longer, but the M2 took, I don't know, close to three times longer. And so even though we've talked about the SSDs and people said we were overreacting, this is just the real world difference. And it's not like we have 10 or 20 tabs open or we're doing something crazy. This just proves that the base M2 MacBook Pro isn't a great multitasking machine if you're doing productivity. If you're just doing web browsing, it's completely fine. So I don't know if Apple did testing. I'm sure they do. They spent $21 billion in R&D last year, but it's just a good way to get people to spend more money to upgrade their SSD to not have this issue or RAM or both. And of course it's working because now that this info is out, people are spending more money and they're buying the 512 models when before the base 256s would outsell by about three times, I believe, with the MacBook Air. Whereas comparing both these on the MacBook Air side, you can get one for a killer deal and it holds up to those kind of multitasking tasks. And now we're gonna do a bit of simple video editing. Now, once again, I just have Final Cut opened up right now. Uh, realistically, I would have web browsing tabs. A lot of times I'd have Photoshop or Lightroom opened up in the background, but I feel bad for doing tests with other stuff loaded up because I know how much it's gonna slow down. And so many people are giving us flack and YouTube creators as well that we're pushing on this too much. We're being unrealistic, but you guys see the results for your so the first thing I'm gonna do, real world test, is just stabilizing a 4K video clip here. The first thing I'm gonna do is stabilize this video clip. We know the M2 has 10 core graphics that are much more powerful. That took 7.6 seconds compared to 9.8, so just over a two second difference. And that is almost 30% faster, so it lines up with the differences, but this just shows you what it represents in the real world. And now I'm playing back a five minute 4K project with a few effects added, which is very typical for average people. Some people don't even use things like color correction and things like that. Both systems are handling it perfectly, and neither machines are maxing out the graphics to be able to do tasks like these. And I have done a lot of 4K video editing on the base M1 MacBook Air, and it's done a surprisingly good job. And now let's go ahead and export this five minute project. Mine are usually about 10 minutes or so, but depending on your length, you guys could just multiply the results. Two minutes and 22 seconds for the M2 and two minutes and 25 seconds for the M1 MacBook Air. So realistically, that is no difference. And once again, we shut everything off and did not touch the systems as this was happening. Now, that is not realistic. We're usually working on thumbnails in Photoshop. We're browsing the web. We have stuff open. We don't just sit there, which you should be doing if you want the best performance, at least on the M2. So let's just open a few tabs like we had before. So we have those opened up right here. Everything's running just fine. And then I also opened up Photoshop with some images as well, just like I would on a normal basis, or this could be any other application, Microsoft Office for you that you have something open, anything else really. And now let's run that export again, which isn't really super tough on the RAM uh, when we're running this, just because it's a short, easy kind of test, things that normal people do. Right away, our M1 MacBook Air is ahead. We're at 21% compared to 10 on the M2. And if we check out the responsiveness difference, let's go ahead and open up Chrome, lagging up right there a bit. Let's shift through tabs. Definitely a lot slower. And these systems are set up identically. The amount of storage we have left is identical. And here we're even seeing some choppiness in that video. I'm clicking them at the same time. You guys are seeing the difference in real time with no editing, nothing being cut out of this section. I hit my email over here. And I mean, that just show, that just kind of speaks for itself. And this is why we've been uh, really negative about this laptop, at least the base configuration, just because we don't think that a new laptop that is more expensive compared to a cheaper lineup that is a year and a half older should perform worse in any scenario. This just does not make sense and it's kind of inexcusable for us. Let me open up Photoshop again on both of these. And let's just check out a few of these images. 
Um, I don't have any effects or anything added, anything that uses graphics, none of that at all. Right there, that was pretty similar. I think the M2 was slightly faster. Oh, the M1 beat that one out. So we are rendering in the background. A lot of times, we're not just leaving our computer and waiting, we're multitasking. Let's go back into Final Cut. Oh, I actually just missed the M1 finishing up. Uh, it took two minutes and 43 seconds, actually slightly faster than that because I hit it too late. And we're at 39% right now on the M2. The M1, we gave it so much praise when it came out. The M1 Air told a lot of people, buy the base model, stick with eight gigs of RAM. The swap works so well. The, the system is so responsive. Well, this is proof right here. And everybody that's been giving us hate on the M2, uh, that we've been you know hating on the M2, or been talking about this and trying to get the word out there, this is the real world results. We're at 55% right now. All right, we are done. And instead of taking two minutes and 43 seconds on the M1 Air, actually slightly faster than that, it took five minutes and 46 seconds. That is with Photoshop open, with just some images, without you know the smart effects and graphics tasks and all that in the background. Our five web browsing tabs in Chrome. Uh, Safari is not much different. We tested it out in another video, and then exporting that five-minute video. Now, if it was a 10 or 20-minute video, it hit the RAM harder, so it would be a bigger difference. So the M2 is faster, but as long as you're only opening one application and letting it sit there and not do anything else. And that is extremely unrealistic. Now, if you know this knowledge and you have the system, you're gonna wanna use it that way uh, to get the you know proper performance. And even then, it just was so close to the M1 MacBook Air. Um, but if you had to make a choice between the systems, the base model, I, I just, we cannot recommend it whatsoever. It is so hard to recommend because when it's faster, it's not much faster, but when it's slower, like when you're multitasking, using it in real life scenarios, it can get a lot slower. Now, yes, you have to spend more money. You cannot buy the base model if you need the M2 chip. Uh, you need to at least spend another 200 or another 400, but then again, Apple would want you at that point while well, you're spending a lot, and you might as well just jump up to the 14 inch, which is a much better machine. And that is our dilemma. And for all the people saying, hey, this is benchmarks, these people are pushing all these benchmarks, unreal stuff out the system, they're trying to break them, you guys are seeing this completely real time, not some tests done with nothing else open, with nothing on the SSD, just Mac OS in one program, and then showing some report off camera. This is the truth. So please share this to people that are trying to buy one of these systems um, because this is the truth and we have nothing to hide. And for you guys, if you're saying the M2 is kind of disappointing, I'll buy the M1 MacBook Air, you are absolutely 100% right or even more than 100% if that's possible. I mean, this system for 850 bucks, it's been discounted many times on Amazon or even less, maybe under 800, refurbish, you're getting a super snappy, multitask capable system that is great for pretty much everything that a regular person would do. Now, the last thing is just battery life. This thing's been almost dead this whole time. It wasn't as charged as this when we started, not even close. Um, the battery life is worse for real world mixed use. You're gonna get about eight to 10 hours compared to about nine to 12 on the uh, MacBook Pro because it does have a larger battery included. Um, so there you guys go. Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Of course, we have the M2 version coming out soon. So we'll redo the same comparison with that system. And so you guys can check out another great video right over there. Click that circle above if you want to see that comparison. This is Max and I'll see you in the next one.